that's why we need to reject any politics, any politics that targets people because of race or religion. All right, let me just say this. This is not a matter of political correctness. This is a matter of understanding just what it is that makes us strong. All right, there he is, the man who appointed my next guest, uh, Ajit Pai, Commissioner of the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, one of five FCC commissioners nominated by President Barack Obama in 2012. Hello, sir. Good to talk to you again. Hey, great to speak with you, too. All right, you wrote a, a great piece um, that, that caught my eye and, and the eye of many, many others for the Washington Examiner talking about, um, well, you didn't write it, you were, you were talking about it and you were quoted in it, and it was talking about uh, free expression in this country and how you believe it is slipping away. And you cite, I, I think this is most important of all, what's going on on our college campus, campuses, which has been happening for years, and you also talk about Twitter. Explain. Well, one of the things I think that has made this country great is that we have had for over 200 years a culture of free speech, certainly buttressed by the First Amendment, but more importantly, embraced by a wide variety of Americans. And the notion was that the marketplace of ideas should be an area where a citizen of any stripe with any point of view should be able to stand on the proverbial street corner and say what he or she thinks. But increasingly what we see uh, in 2016, especially in flashpoints like uh, college campuses, is the notion that one point of view is the right one and all other points of view should be excluded or at least shouted down and, and discouraged. And that I think is antithetical to the very notion of a culture that promotes free speech. And what I voiced concern about was the fact that whether we're on a college campus or in an online space like Twitter, increasingly we're seeing uh, less tolerance for different points of view and ultimately that's something that could jeopardize uh, the very First Amendment protections we've taken often for granted low these uh, many years. And when the president, that, that cut was from the State of the Union that you heard, when he stands there and says it's not about political correctness, it's about basically being who we are, when one person or any person, especially someone in charge, especially a president, tries to tell us who we are and then say based on who we are, you shouldn't be saying this or that, I mean that's, that, that's extremely dangerous, is it not? Well, I think all too often uh, when people say, oh, we, of course we believe in the freedom of speech for, for any particular point of view, and you hear a lot of, of uh, robust applause, all too often what they mean is, we don't discriminate against my point of view. All the people with the incorrect views, of course, uh, you know, are, are, should be left with less protection. And that's exactly the wrong view, I think. I think we should embrace a really robust marketplace of ideas. And that's why one of the reasons I mentioned uh, Twitter and other social media platforms is that is the street corner of the 21st century. That is where views have to be joined and arguments have to be made. And if you shut out or discourage one point of view, that's not going to be a street corner where many people are going to be able to speak or listen. Where do you weigh in on, uh, personally or in your capacity uh, as, a, as a commissioner, um, where do you weigh in on this whole Apple versus the FBI situation? I, I, to me, I, I thought the, the court went too far, and it seems like they want Apple to give over the formula to the FBI where they could uh, get into every uh, one of those phones instead of saying, okay, Apple, you do whatever the heck you have to do unlock that phone, get them the information, give them the phone, and then you could burn however your recipe for how you did it. So for better or worse, uh, this area lies with, uh, from uh, beyond the FCC's bailiwick. And additionally, I hadn't, haven't had a chance to study either uh, the court order that the company has gotten or uh, the particulars of the company's response. And I haven't had a chance to talk to engineers about uh, the particular nature of the encryption solution that the FBI is seeking. So as much as I hate to punt on this issue, <laughs> I really need to become much more fully informed about it to give you an educated opinion. Do, do you fear that, that one day, if we, if we had a Democrat, if the next president is a Democrat and the Congress becomes Democrat, do you believe that we're maybe not that far off from laws like some, uh, some European countries have uh, and others where you know, you outlaw some kinds of speech as quote unquote hate speech? I certainly hope we never cross that line. Unfortunately, there is a disturbing proportion of our populace that seems quite comfortable to say 
uh, yeah, certain kinds of speech are just beyond the pale, and we shouldn't allow it. If you look at some of the surveys of millennials in particular, they seem extremely comfortable with the idea that certain kinds of uh, spoken words should be simply outlawed or should be strongly penalized. And it, it, unfortunately, as I said in my uh, interview with the Washington Examiner, the text of the First Amendment is fantastic. It's great to have that freedom of speech enshrined in our Constitution. However, there are certain cultural values that undergird that First Amendment, and those cultural values are essential if the First Amendment is to have any meaning. Yep. So that next generation of Americans is really going to have to be uh, strong support. Uh, they'll have to be strongly supporting uh, the notion of free speech, yep. even for ideas they find absolutely re uh, you know, reprehensible. Commissioner Pye, great to talk to you, sir. As always, thank you. We're coming back with Richard Pearl, ladies and gentlemen.